Okay, um, so I want to actually talk more about asynchronous teaching, which I think is a really good um, contrast to some of the things we've been talking about so far. And actually watching Jen's presentation, I think if you think about what Jen's presentation was and how she set up her course, I'm going to show you like almost an exact opposite, because I think it is really important to think about whether you're teaching synchronously, which is, I, sorry, in the online teaching world, we call it synchronous. I know in Mesa, we're calling it remote. Um, so remote teaching versus what are we calling it? Web teaching. So asynchronous versus synchronous. Um, and the reason why I think it's really important to really think about which type of course you're going to be um, teaching and how you set up your course is that synchronous courses, you are really, you're guiding your students a lot more. You're meeting with them weekly. You're having those face-to-face -face sessions. But asynchronously by definition tends to mean that you're not going to be there really working with them, you know, face-to-face when I say face-to-face, -face, I mean, you know, via Zoom or something, and you're not maybe holding their hand throughout the process as much. So you really want to think about designing your course so that someone can almost not contact you and be able to do this from anywhere in the world, right? And it being very simple is how I like to look at it. So I'm going to share um, my Canvas course from my online astronomy course, which is the web version. So this is going to be for anyone that's teaching the actual designated web courses at Mesa, which means either you've already taken the district certification or you're in the process of that now. So just keep that in mind. This is not meant to be what I know a lot of you are doing as a remote session. So with that in mind, it might look a little bit more simple. Um, but that's because I know my students are doing this without necessarily a lot of back and forth, not meaning that I'm not in there talking to them. It's just they're going to be able to do this mostly on their own. Okay. And so what I really want to reiterate here is that when you make, I use modules. Um, and so you can see all of my modules up here and I base them by the week. So this is a 10 week online course. So we are learning a lot in a short amount of time, but I base all of my modules by the week. So that is similar to what you saw in some of the presentations about, you know, week by week, here's your assignments. What I have learned through trying, you know, different <clears throat> ways to organize an online course is that having everything that the student needs to do in one spot is really crucial. And if you've taken any of like those at one courses or a MOOC course, I, it, I, as a learner, I know I love that too, that you have one spot for that one week, you know exactly what you have to do. The other thing I think is really important is that you want each week, in my opinion, to look the same. So that way, especially in a short course, like an eight or 10 week course, the students know exactly what to expect each week <clears throat> so that they can plan their study time and schedule. Because especially if they've chosen to take an asynchronous web-based course, they probably have a lot of other things going on in their life. Like they're working full time, maybe they're not even, maybe they're traveling or they have other obligations and that their education is something that they probably want to get in and get done with a little bit. So having their, having your course the same each week is really going to help them not worry about finding things and not knowing what to expect, but just be able to jump right into the material and learn what they actually came there to learn. So with that, I have all of my modules look pretty much the same. So I always have an introduction page. These are all pages, sorry, most of them. Um, an introduction page, and then they have their reading assignment. So I'm using a textbook um, publisher's reading. So it's an ebook that they go and access. Then I have um, what I call um, week prep, which is essentially like reading questions, lecture notes. So, and then I always have a discussion or an activity or both, and then a homework and a quiz. And this is the same every single week. So that way, after their first week with me, they know, okay, I'm going to have, she's going to have an introduction module. I'm going to have reading, I'm going to have homework, I'm going to have discussion activity, and finally a quiz. And that way it's the same all the time. So I'll just kind of step you through each of these. And Jen mentioned it, and it's something that I will tell any of you when I start talking about online education, as I really believe that the list, the, the fewer clicks you can have, the better. Um, I always get annoyed when I go to a website and you want to get to something, you're like, click, 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 right? Oh, so as few as clicks as possible when you're making things, which means the more you can embed stuff within your Canvas pages, I think the better. And I've been really surprised that a lot of these different tools that we're all talking about using are easily embedded into the Canvas pages. Like I just found out yesterday that Padlet, which is a fun tool if any, any of you want to use, you can actually embed the HTML file right into a Canvas page. I was, that just really amazed me yesterday. So I can show you guys that later, but that is beautiful because then your Padlet page is right in the Canvas page. 
super simple. So anyways, the tools are really there to make everything within Canvas because Canvas is your course really. And if you can keep people there, that's better. So, okay, so every week has an introduction, right? Usually I have a little bit more like an introduction, like what's happening. And then I always include a video, which is usually just me. And this is my personal interaction with the students besides email and grading and things like that and feedback. You know, just a video saying, hey, here's what's going on this week. Here's what to expect. And then I always have like their to-do list down here. And you'll notice that this is just what's in the module. So it's just another way to present, hey, you're going to do your reading, your reading questions, your lecture notes, and so forth. So I just have that written out. Now, of course, I do have this extra assignment down there, but I make sure I, it's an assignment that happens throughout the semester, but I just make sure students know that it's available to them each week, right? So I use the very traditional module um, way of doing things. So all they have to do is click next. And I'm really trying to, at first I was resistant to this, but then I noticed when I take online classes, I really like when I can just go next, 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 right? It's, it's a streamlined way of learning, I think. And so. I've been trying to actually make more of my courses like this. So when they hit next, they get to their reading assignment. Now this again is, is gonna act, try to access the publisher's website. So depending honestly on the time of day and when I do this, it sometimes will take a little bit longer, but this gets them right to their textbook to go read the textbook through the publisher. So if you click on this, it would take you to the ebook. So let's say, okay, I did my reading. I think I have two chapters of reading this week, so I'll just skip to the next one. And then I have this week prep. So I like the idea that students would read and then answer questions. So this is like a little quiz and questions answers they go through about their reading. And then they get to my lecture notes. So I try to encourage students to read before they get to the lecture notes. That way the lecture notes have some kind of context to them. And I keep it pretty simple, like I said. So they provide the lecture notes to them in PDF format. And then I have video lecture notes, right? So this is usually PowerPoint slides with me voicing over. Um, they get more sophisticated as I've gone on, but you know, however you wanna do your lecture notes, recorded lecture notes. And then again, so you can see I keep the format the same. So even though I have nothing down in these two um, divisions here, in other weeks there are videos down here, right? And so I keep it the same, that way students can just clearly see, okay, there's no extra required videos or no extra um, simulations are things to look at this week, but you would some, maybe see something there next week. Okay, but again, that's just keeping the, the kind of format the same. And then they'll get to their whatever activity. So they, you know, saw my initial list that we had a discussion this week, and then we have an activity this week. So here's our discussion, and of course they can take that. Now, of course, you know, let's say, you know, I was done for the week. I'm like, I can't do any more right now. So they might do their discussion and they're done, right? So they go home. And then once they come back, right, all they have to do is go back to modules. Um, I had week three open and they, okay, you know, I completed the discussion. All right, I'm on homework three, right? So it's all right there again in the module for them to see. So they would then start right where they left off and say, okay, now I'm keep working. I'll work on my homework. Again, this is through the publisher website. Um, you could do your homework in the page like Jen had, however you want to do that. And then they come to an activity. And a lot of my activities, um, I have taken a lot of worksheets and things that I've had done face-to-face -face in class over the years and converted them into what I call activities. They often involve some kind of simulation, like I have the FET simulation here, which I haven't embedded yet, um, which Jen has done in a lot of her classes. And then um, they answer questions about the simulation that they use. So that's an activity in the sense that they would do this and they can it's not, a, the only thing I don't like about Canvas in this is that it always calls it a quiz. You know, I wish we could change that um, because I don't, I make a very big point in the beginning of the semester saying, hey, it's not a quiz. If you have unlimited attempts on this, you know, they don't have a certain time frame or anything, but it does say quiz in there, which is always a little hard to see from the teacher's view, but you know, we're dealing with that right now as Canvas is. Okay, so they would submit their quiz and right away they would get their feedback. Um, so there's their feedback on it. So after they've done that, they would move on. I'm sorry, I see I just said it again. That wasn't a quiz, that was an activity. And then they would take their final quiz for the week, which obviously looks very similar to that activity, except for the quiz, they only get two attempts on, right? And it's a, it's in a quiz that actually is gonna have more of a, a grade for their final grade. And then that would be it. And so then they finished everything for their module. So I know I kind of sped through that really fast, but my main point to get across was that if you're teaching an asynchronous, meaning a not remote class, I really want to stress that 
having a really clear organization and being consistent in the same each week. That doesn't mean that, okay, you can't add a different type of assignment. It's just, I made it very clear that we always have a discussion and or an, act, an activity. And I keep that consistent. So when you're developing your course from the get-go, I think the hardest thing about teaching online is really that forefront thinking about what does the course gonna look like throughout the entire course? Like, unlike when we're teaching face-to-face, -face, we can kind of wing it a little bit. This is really structured in the fact that I have to make sure that each week I want to look similar, that way students don't get confused. So that's my, I call it like, keep it as simple as possible, which I has found really helps over the years um, for students. And that's all I got. <laughs> that was great.